Okay, she's all burnt. I burnt on some uh, decorative lines around her blanket. Go all the way around. Finish burning everything. So now the next step is to uh, sand her. Okay, I'm going to do that over here at my flap sander. Now what this is going to do, it's just going to take the sharp edge off of where the chips are. Okay, I'm not going to sand the chips away, I don't want to do that. It's just very light. So, you've got to hang on to this, but it's not going to take a lot of wood off. You can see just the uh, the light light spots where the ridges are. There's a good one there up here. That's all it took off. It just took off that sharp edge. So when you paint this now, there's a spot that I'm going to have to fix right there. See that chip right there? No, I don't see any where you're where It's right you there found? by my finger. I'm going to have to fix that. That doesn't look good. So I'll do that, and then I'll see you over at the paint table. Okay, I'm over here on the paint table. I cleaned it all up just for you guys. Unfortunately, cleaning the things up around here, I lost her little neck piece, which goes right in there, so I gotta make a new one of that. Always happening around here. You lose something and it just disappears. So anyway, we're not to that point for a while yet anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, like I said, she's all burnt now. She's uh, been sanded. She's ready to go. I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing here. I've uh, got my paints divided up here. This is where I keep my paints. Over here in this pile, I keep all my browns, my grays, light tans, etc. Back here, I keep all my reds, then my yellows. Over here are all my blues. Here are my greens. And over here, I keep 
my metallics. Okay, gold and silver. Here, these three, I keep these three separate from everything. I have a, a black, it's not really black, it's called licorice. It's got just a touch of white in it to make it more opaque. Black is an opaque color, but this, uh, they put, I think it's a little bit of white in there. Possibly, well, white, let's say white. But it's still, it's still black. But it's no longer transparent. It's opaque now, which means it's solid. I've got a tube of uh, white, plain white. And I've got a tube of, uh, this is called parchment. Yeah, parchment. It's like white, except it has a little yellow in it. I like it. It's great for eyes, things like that. Sometimes white's just too strong. And they say, don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Well, they're white. Ours aren't re eyes aren't really white. They're more of parchment. But I don't think they'd see. Don't, don't fire till you see the parchment of their eyes. Okay, so what I'm going to do today, first off, we're going to paint the face and hair. All right? So this is what I do first off. I dip it right there in that water. See how it changed colors? That's important. Because that's a color you have to take into consideration when you're painting the way I do. And then with the body, although I'm not going to be on it for yet, for a while, I'm still going to uh, soak her down. So that all that water will get into the wood. That's just plain water. I would just set that over there. So it's See how that color changed? That's important. Got to remember that. Okay, so for the skin tones, which is what I paint first, I'm going to use red iron oxide. down to the last of that. I'm going to use yellow ochre. This is antique gold, but it's yellow ochre. And being that she's a Native American, these are the colors I'd use for a Caucasian, a white cowboy. But being that she's a Native American, I'm going to put a little bit of brown. Not that much. This is uh, asphaltum. It's a real rich brown. I really like this. I use it a lot. Umber, burnt umber, let's see. Burnt umber is sort of a muddy brown. I don't like, it's not as rich as this. I use it occasionally, but generally I always use this here. But I did take a tube of this and a tube of the burnt umber and mix them together I made my own dark burn umber, which is really dark, which I use a lot. But it's a real rich color now. Okay, so we got our three colors there. I got my old reliable handy, just in case while I'm painting I come across a tag on a piece of wood hanging off there that I want to get rid of. So that's always handy. So I get my brush out here. Give me some water. Drag out some red. Drag out some yellow. Get some brown. And we'll start with that. Wash out my brush. start laying the colors on. Now I'm not concerned if I paint over into that area there because I'm going to come back with black and that will cover it up. Right now I just want to get a good base coat on her face.
back it up just a bit more. some red out here where the sun hits her cheeks and take some of that red iron oxide And also one other thing, this is just a paint box, but in, the, in this paint box I put a piece of glass and that lets me look down through the paint to see how thick the wash is that I'm putting on here. Because I'm not putting colors on here straight, I'm putting just washes. It's going to be that for now. And I'm going to get my uh, get that out of here. And oh, I wanted to show you when you're buying paint, uh, don't think you can just intermix one brand with the other brand. Although I always say there's just one big pot of paint, in this case a pot of midnight blue sitting over in China somewhere. And everybody, no matter what the brand name is, everybody's got their own little label that they're dipping in there and getting their paint out of. Because all this stuff comes from China, I'm sure. Wouldn't surprise me. But look, look at the difference. Let me squeeze out a little bit. These are both midnight blues. Can you see the difference? Hopefully you can. This one has a lot of white in it. Not a lot of white, but it's got more white in it than that one there. That one is a real rich midnight blue. I went down to Hobby Lobby and I picked up uh, this midnight blue and came back and started painting with it. I said, wait a minute, this just does not look like the color that I was using before. So I went back and found Polk Art, which was the color that I was after. So anyway, well, while I've got this blue, blue out here, we will paint a little more on the face. See this wash here? I hope you can see that. You almost have to get straight down on it, Judy, to get away from the reflection. See how see how little how small that amount of paint is? I mean it is nothing. Let me get another. Put that down and then wash it back out. See when I washed it out? So when I'm painting things like shadow on the eyes. I just want to get a little bit of that and paint.
clean it around her eyes. shadow. See how much that helped it. Got a little bit here. And another thing, if you get too much paint, just dip your brush back in your water and kind of bleed it out of there. Wash it off. See there? That looks a lot better. We can actually add a little bit more red out here. that Indians don't wear lipstick. There, that's much better. Much better. Okay. So we're going to do, get rid of these blues before I make a goof. Squeeze me out some black here. Getting down to the end of my black, too. And find me a good brush here. I think that's a good. That's my favorite brush. Another thing, all these colors you see here, I don't use three quarters of them. Like you, probably, I go to the store. I gotta buy something when I'm over by the paint, paint area. I just have to buy something. It's just a natural, natural thing. I don't, don't necessarily need it. Need it? You only need a few colors to make every color that's up here. Now, one thing I'm gonna do right off. Just put on my magnifiers if I can find them. Here they are. Nope. They're over on my work table. Back again. go down to buy your brushes, spend a little extra and buy yourself some good brushes. They'll last you and in the long run they're cheaper because by the t if you take care of them they'll last you for years and years and years. Some of these brushes I've got here I've had for 25 years and they're still just as almost as good as the day I bought them. them out after you after you use them and reform them with your fingers and let them dry and they'll come on get down in there they'll last a long long time
can see that burn mark around there. See, it's not allowing that black to crawl over into that air, that red. That keep, keeps your keeps your carvings real or your colors real sharp and crisp and snappy, and that's what you want. Okay, so I got that side pretty well outlined. So now I can switch over. Well, here I'm gonna. He's got that camera sticking in my face. So if I make a mistake, it's her fault. And that spot right there is not a bleed over, that's the camera in my face. Okay? Yep, sounds like rain. So anyway, once you get you get a good border paint around there, you can get a larger brush. And really lay the color on. And I always say, don't be a dabber. A dabber's this, you know, they'll do this. Okay. And do that. Me, I load my brushes up. All the way. That gives me a lot of paint to put it on. And I'm always going back for more. Once you're finished, well, once you think you're finished, especially on the hair, you're going to end up having to go back and paint the, uh, what my friend called the holidays, the spots, little spots that you thought you'd got, but pop up after the paint dries. And believe me, there will be some. So there, you can see, we got that one side painting. And while I got my brush here, I'll just go ahead and do this down here. So there we got one, you know, you pretend I've painted the other side. See there, there's a holiday right there. Got that sucker. Okay, so I'll come back later and do the other side of her head and we'll move on. Alright, let me set that right back there. Okay, let's get this one over here. I'm going to take a big brush here. Get her loaded up and I'm going to paint the area again, or wet down the area again that we're going to paint here real quick. Because uh, painting wet, you want the, uh, you want the paint to flow evenly across the whole area and painting dry doesn't allow you to do that so easily. Again, notice the diff color difference. So, for her buckskin, raw sienna is a good color for buckskin. They used to make a buckskin brown. That ain't it. But like, I don't know why they do it, but for some strange reason, they just stop 
making these colors. I'm trying to find the yeah, here's the buckskin brown. They don't make it anymore. I don't know why I've looked for it. But I've never been able to find it. Anyway. Always make sure you got the lid screwed on when you shake it. Squeeze me out some here. Go around the braid here. I'm not worried about painting over the beaded area because we're going to take care of that. Now down here on the bottom, up where the fringe meets the upper part of her dress. Kind of shade it a little just to emphasize. See how much better that looks. Just a little darker up around there. I don't want a hard line where the colors meet. I want to blend it out there. Okay, that's good. 
Now I'm going to take a little bit of that parchment. Remember, the parchment's got a little, a little bit of, well here, I better squeeze it out because it's way down in there. messy today. I'm not used to having people watch me while I paint. I want a little lighter color up in here. Where the sun hits it. I want a little darker color. Right down there. That looks good. And up a little. Oops. So I think that's going to be it for today. We'll come back in the next video and uh, work on another area. Probably detail these areas in here and down along the bead beading once they dry. Okay. And lastly, oh, I forgot to carve off that pencil lead. I'm going to have to do that. don't want to try to paint over pencil lead because it just never works. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.